Hey there everyone, I'm Round the Wheel, and welcome to Chips Challenge! This game doesn't leave a lot of time for introductions, so we'll maybe we'll talk about a little more about where it came from later. Uh, where it came from, what it's about. But right now we're on Lesson 1. There are a few tutorial levels starting off. We have to collect chips, as many chips as we can. And the colored keys correspond to the colored locks. They can only be used once, except for green keys, which have infinite uses. I don't think you get stuck in this level, but... It, uh, yeah, I don't think it's possible to even get stuck in this level. We're going to go down, we're going to get our chip and our green key, and that's going to open up the other two. And once we have all the chips in the level, we can go through the gate. Yowzer! First try! That's what we're going for with most of these levels. We're not really going to worry about our score, though. We're going to go ahead and uh, move on to this little jazz swinging ditty right here. One of my favorite... <laughs> I was going to say one of my favorite songs of the game, but there's only two songs of the game. Three if you have canyon.mid in some folder, but we're not going to be listening to Trip Through the Grand Canyon anytime soon. This is uh, bridge building. To build a bridge across water, you can push these brown blocks. Push into the water once, it makes a little uh, mud that enemies can't walk over, and then you step on it to pack it down. And we're going to make our bridge across, and there's bugs. There's our first like real enemy. You don't want to touch enemies, you'll die in one hit. Well, that was simple enough. Let's keep on moving. But uh, trust me, it's going to get way harder. Now we get to walk on the various types of land that Chip cannot touch without uh, without a lot of disaster. Uh, we are going to uh, get the flippers, go up in the water, and get the ice skates. If we don't have ice skates, we'll slip on the ice like a crazy person. And if we don't have these orange fire boots, we will uh, burn like a crazy person. And if we don't have these suction boots, we will uh, go all crazy on the arrows like a crazy person. So now let's run over to the exit now that we have a little control of our faculties. There we go, a quick introduction to shoes. The various shoes that we can collect. And now we have toggle buttons. Toggle bu and uh, this one is uh, this one is a little bit of a uh, potpourri kind of level. We're going to get the chips under here, but the middle one contains fire, so we don't want to do that. That is one thing I remember about this game. And the green buttons, they uh, open these uh, alternating gates and such like and whatnot. They're pretty handy dandy, useful. Alright, let's go down and... There we go. We have most of the chips now, but I think we're going to move on to the, uh... I think we're going to move on to the blue and brown buttons now. Nope, just the blue tanks. Or, the blue buttons. The blue buttons control the tanks. They make them move up and down. We'll have a lot to do with that later that's just absolutely crazy go nuts. You don't want to touch the tanks either. They're like a... They act like an enemy. They're not a solid object that you can brush up against. We're not going to bother with hints either, because I'm awesome enough. I think I can, uh, get away with most of this. Let's go to Lesson 5 now. There is no way to get this chip right now. We have to use what we've learned about toggle doors. So we're going to touch this green button. Get on the other side there, Mr. Ball. We can make fireballs come out of the generator if we want. That's what a block with an enemy on it is. A block with an enemy on it is a generator. And it will, if you push the button down, it'll make an enemy come out. And usually they're set up in a way so that lots of enemies are coming out. And you have to shut it off somehow to make things easier. Like, in this case, getting this red key. And also, we don't want to touch water or fire, remember? Because Chip is a little 90-pound weakling. Yeah, let's just, uh, yeah. I don't want to hear that pop, pop, pop over again. Unless Magnitude is in the room. Now, these brown buttons, they release bear traps. If you get, you can walk in, the big brown circle is a bear trap. And if you walk into, it's not like a bear trap, like, <laughs> I think that's what the, uh, help file called them. If we were, uh... If we had a little more, uh, if we had a little less advanced of an operating system, we might peruse the help file, but I don't think you can access help files in Windows 7, or, uh, the .hlp file as it was, as it was during the Windows 3.1 era when this game came out, so. Alright, there are, uh, fake walls in this game also. I, we aren't gonna be able to get those chips, because you can run into invisible walls from time to time, but we only have to get four chips, which are over here. Well, that wasn't too bad. Just got to find your way around the invisible walls. Those will become a pain in the ass later. There we go. Lesson 7. This guy is the spy. He will take away anything you are currently holding on to. And there is a uh, definite order to this level. These are teleporters. Teleporters, the way teleporters work is you walk into them from a certain direction. You'll also be teleported out in that direction. So, like, if I go through it up, I'll be exited out up. That plays into a lot of factors later. Uh, so I'm going to get the, uh, fire boots, and I'm going to move very carefully. I'm going to take the fire, and I'm going to step on the thing, and this is going to force me over here. 
And now the spy is going to take away my fire boots. If I had been... The way to do this level, there is a definite way to do it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just get this chip while I can. Uh, without running into anything or anybody. And I'm also going to pick up my flippers. You want to pick up one shoe at a time in this level. That way you're not... That way you don't get things taken away and it's not impossible to beat. And these are uh, thin walls. Thin walls, you can still move around them and stuff, but they're not as obtrusive as block walls. And we have one more final lesson, I think, and that's lesson eight. And that is the enemies cannot walk on dirt or gravel. The teeth, the teeth are quite an annoying enemy. They like to follow you around, but you can outrun them eventually. We only have to get the one chip and we are out of here. And now we have nuts and bolts. We have a little potpourri hodgepodge level to use what we've learned. And now this is the time I'm going to use to talk about Chip's Challenge. Chip's Challenge was originally made for uh, a handheld called the Atari Lynx. A pretty, pretty shitty little system, as memory serves. But this was where it first came out. And the game did not lock, look like this at all. Not by a long shot. You can Google image shots of it. It was really ugly. But this game, I think this is the version of the game that people know best. It, it's crisp and it's clean. And uh, it was made by Epics, who are probably best known for... See, I'm sliding along the ice because I'm all out of control and stuff. Aw, oh, crap. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. But I have another chance here. You essentially have infinite lives unless you choose to give up after a while. If you take too many tries, the game will ask you if you want to move on, and you can do that if you so choose. But we're going to try to be every level. We're going to try to 100% this game. And yes, Chip's Challenge was made by Epics, who are probably best known for uh, Karate Champ and the lawsuit that caused with Data East. Just two shitty game companies duking it out in lawsuits, claiming that everybody stole their product. Where is There it is. There's the uh, parallel floor. Looking for parallel floors here. There we go, and now we want to make our way onwards and upwards. And this is the, uh, I think this is the version people are most familiar with, probably. It seems that way to me, anyhow. So, uh, this is definitely the version I grew up with. It was in the, uh, Windows Best of Windows Entertainment Pack. Windows used to come out with these, uh, little... Windows used to come out with these little entertainment packs, and they would have games in them, and they released, I think, four of them. And Chip's Challenge was in the fourth of four. So, uh, and it was in the best of, which uh, we got for our computer back in the day. This was the game I was most drawn to in that pack, because it was the most fully fleshed out and realized video game. And it was, it, it was the most like a video game, not just some distraction like Solitaire or Free Cell, or Jazz Ball, or anything silly like that. No, this was like, this was the one game that was like an actual game, so it spoke, it spoke to me, if you will. So, we're going to be playing through Chip's Challenge, running around doing as, as many levels as we can per day. We're going to only do this level first, because, uh, okay, what is the, uh, what is the arrangement here? How do I push these blocks around so that, uh, you can push blocks into bombs. I don't know if they teach you that right off the bat, but you can push blocks into bombs to defuse the bombs. Obviously, you don't want to touch bombs. You don't want to touch really much of anything in this game that isn't a chip. S because you will you will die. You will be killed by pretty much everything. Chip is a little weakling. He's a little weenie man. See how pale he is? Look at his, uh, look at his little boy's haircut and his pale skin. P Look at those 16 colors. Look at the look at the richness of detail there. I think we are just about done with chip collecting, which means we are uh, just about done for today. Uh, we're only going to go through these nine levels. The tutorial levels plus the one potpourri level kind of deserve to be blocked off by themselves. And then we'll get into really real actual gameplay. And we can hold the uh, bear traps open indefinitely by pushing a block over them, which is how we're going to get ourselves to the exit. That is it. Go Bit Buster. That's like second place. Second place is first loser. Way to go, Chip, you loser. Lowering my score like a jerk. Anyway, next time we're going to move on to level 10. There are 149 levels. In Actually, Brush Fire is a pretty quick one. There's no chips, and uh, you basically just have to make your way through a fire maze before time runs out. Let's see if I remember real quick how to get through this maze. I love Chip's little noise when he's pushing up against stuff. <laughs> oh, Chip, you sound like you have asthma problems. And no, it doesn't seem as though I remember my way through this very well. Oh, crap. Where am I going? I'm going uh, somewhere over... Oh, God. Oh, yeah, I forgot there was a bug following me around, too. That sucks. All right. Yeah, now we're on the right track. 
Now you're on the trolley. Okay, yeah, 10 levels is a pretty good, decent round number. I know you go up and around through here. I definitely want to avoid running into that stupid bug if I can at all. Let's see. I think I'm almost to the end here. I think I want to go up through here. Uh, yeah, the exit is just up over this way. So 10 levels is good. That's it for today. Next time, we will start back off on Trinity, another kind of... Uh, door level, except this time slightly more complicated and larger. This is probably the biggest level yet, which is a great excuse to get to it next time.